Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and today I'm here with my big brother, Pastor Morgan Roders. What's up, guys? Good to see you again. I can't see you, but we're here with you. (laughs) Yes, and we have a special guest that we're interviewing, and then, Lord willing, we will be able to have him in person here at our church. Uh, But right now, we want to introduce our guest, Russ Miller. Russ, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me on your program. I, I look forward to speaking with you guys today. So before we get started, we'll have Morgan pray for us, and then we'll start with the questions. All right. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you so much for this time. Thank you uh, for bringing Russ here. Uh, thank you for uh, Skype and being able to use this technology. I pray that it will run smoothly so that we can uh, bring this content to your people and to uh, really give them the information that they need to to promote th- your word, God, and not to uh, distort your word, not to add to your word. And so I just thank you for his ministry. I pray that you would just bless him and his ministry, refresh him, God, and help him as I know that he probably gets a lot of attacks um, against creationism. And, and so I just pray that he'll be able to stand for that firmly and that he'll be able to uh, just be able to combat all of the arguments, all the things that try to tear down your word, God. So we just thank you for this time that we get to talk with him. And I pray that would be a blessed time. And it's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. So first question is kind of vague and broad, but who are you and what do you do? We know that you um, have your website, creationministries.org, that everyone can check out. Um, we heard about you from David Catalano, who comes to our church, and we also have your book right here, which is called mm-hmm. Cost. Um, so, can you tell our listeners who you are and what you do? Well, I always tell people I'm just a guy, <laughs> and um, oh, I had a uh, nationwide business. Uh, my goal was to retire at the age of 49, but at the age of 40, God got a hold of me, and mm-hmm. I was a trustee in my church at the time. But I was also what you would call a theistic evolutionist. Mm -hmm. I have about 174 college credits. In fact, exactly 174 college credits. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thought is millions of years in Darwinism. And I had, uh, instead of being one of the, unfortunately, majority of Christian kids that lose their, or leave the church by the age of 20, I actually hung in there, but I made God's word fit with what I was being taught. Mm. So I thought God must have used evolution in millions of years of time. There were a lot of things I didn't understand at that time about those teachings, like they put death before mankind, which we can talk about later. But uh, at the age of 40, I, uh, I discovered some of the information I share with others today, and it made a big difference in my life to the point that I Studied it for four years very intently, and I ended up giving my business away to a fellow who worked for me for 13 years, and I went cold turkey into the ministry. Well, that was 24 years ago, and this Mm. is what we've done since. So I speak in churches, conferences. I've developed several uh, Grand Canyon tours. I take Mm. about 1,000 people a year on biblical-based Grand Canyon tours, Mm. which are extremely eye-opening. Um, and um, we've been doing that for quite a while now. I buy different books. My book, Cost, is my main book now, and it covers uh, the top 10 old earth beliefs, top 10 Darwinian beliefs, top 10 reasons to believe the Bible, and more. And it's we, we just go where God opens doors for us. Amen. Mm. That's good. That. Yeah, so you say that you were a theistic evolutionist before? Is I was. It, yeah. I wasn't okay. a diehard. I wasn't selling it to other people. Yeah. But in my mind, I just figured, well, they're teaching we evolved over millions of years. I guess God must have used millions of years of time to slowly evolve us. And that's mm. basically a theistic evolutionist. But the key yeah. was um, that I wasn't selling it to other people. Just mm-hmm. in my own mind, that's how I, I balance things until I found out some of the information I now share with others, and it makes a big difference in other people's lives when they get to see it. Mm. Yeah, because 
So I, I started studying this more uh, this year, actually. So at the beginning of this year, uh, when we were going through Genesis. Mm -hmm. And when I was looking at it before, I used to think, well, it's okay if some people think like like old earth. And I, I wasn't into the evolution part, like mixing that. But with old mm -hmm. earth, I was like, okay, maybe that's a thing that people can think or believe. But then when I started looking at it, it seemed like, it was challenging the authority of God's word. And so mm -hmm. I just wanted to see what you thought about that mm -hmm. and, and what you would say to someone who said, why does it matter? Why can't we just add millions of years? Like, why can't we put that between verses one and two mm -hmm. and, and things like that? So, cause I, I just heard someone say that, Oh, the earth is 6,000 years old, but there's millions of years before that recreation <laughs> of the earth. So, there's a lot of different theories, but why is it so important to hold to creationism? Well, there's a few reasons. Uh, uh, one is all the different beliefs out there today. If we start, hmm. uh, first of all, the old earth beliefs that are worshipped today, and I mean worship, mm -hmm. they're the yeah. foundation of Darwinism, naturalism, humanism, atheism, etc. Uh, they all, they were only invented 220 years ago. They're a fairly hmm. new invention. Uh, they're invented through the modern old earth beliefs are based on the man-made geologic column or time scale, mm -hmm. which is based on two beliefs. The crust of the earth form uniformly and slowly over long ages of time at the rate we see it forming today, and there was never a global flood. That, those two beliefs are the foundation of modern geology, secular geology. Well, it's interesting because in 2 Peter 3, 3 through 6, given to us 2,000 years ago, we're told in the last days, so this is the last days prophecy, mm -hmm. I'm going to paraphrase here, but non-believers are going to come along claiming uniform processes and denying the global flood. Mm. And that's exactly huh. what secular geology is based upon. So yeah. Whether a Christian understands that or not, they are accepting those beliefs when they accept old earth beliefs. Yeah. Now, now from a Christian standpoint, I can see, and you're right, first of all, you, you got to look at God's Word. So mm -hmm. when you accept the old earth beliefs, you're actually denying God's Word on the creation accounts and His accounts of, of His mm -hmm. creation. He's the Creator, so in a way, you're actually denying the Creator, and now you're getting into a whole... Uh, um, mess yeah. of theology there mm -hmm. but uh, some people say to me well why does it matter if god used six days or six billion years mm -hmm. well probably one of the the first things besides the fact you're denying the flood i mean if you're an old earth christian and some and you understand where those beliefs come from mm -hmm. you're going to claim it was a local flood because secular geology is based on uniformity and denial of the flood but from a Christian standpoint, what Christians do get is when I point out that every old earth belief, no matter how well intentioned it may be, mm -hmm. puts death before Adam. Yep, that's well, a problem. Think about <laughs> this. That's a big problem mm -hmm. because the foundation of the gospel message is that God gave us a perfect creation. In fact, if someone were to ask us, how can you have a loving God in a world full of death and suffering? Now, there's mm -hmm. a common question. and. Yep. It's an important question. I, I get that from scoffers and skeptics, and mm -hmm. I get it from very well-meaning Christians both. Mm. Well, if, if folks listening get nothing out of our conversation today, I just want them to know how to answer that question biblically. Mm. It's a very simple answer. Uh, when someone asks you, how can there be a loving God and a world full of death? The answer is God didn't give us the world the way it is today, full of death and suffering. Mm. God gave us a perfect creation. That's the mm -hmm. C I'm at what cost. What happened to it was Adam's original sin. The O original is the O in the cost. Mm. And that original sin is what brought on the curse, allowing death to enter. And mm. that's the reason we live in a world full of death today, but we have a loving God. So there's the yeah. biblical answer. But if you put death before Adam, you can't turn around and say Adam's sin brought in death. Mm. But, you know, that, that answer should go a bit further, though. You see, that, yeah. that original sin that allowed death to enter also separated us from God. Yep. That required us to be redeemed with him. Amen. Well, as you know, now we've got a big problem because we're all sinful. We can't <laughs> redeem ourselves with God. <laughs> yep. If you ever told a lie, if you ever taken a paper clip or something that didn't belong to you, on and on that goes. 
but we can't redeem ourselves with God. So, so how loving is God? He sent his only begotten son to, to live a sinless life and die in our place. His shit mm. was covering our sin. Yeah. So if we accept him, we believe in him as our Lord and Savior, we're redeemed with him. Well, when you put old earth beliefs, when you put death before Adam, and someone asks you that question, you can't answer it because you've already put death before Adam. You've torpedoed the yeah. foundation of the gospel message, and you, you probably never thought about it if you're just listening to us today. Yeah. yeah. That's what the cost of book cost is mm-hmm. about. Good. Yeah, right that's here. good. Yeah, and I was thinking uh, there's a verse in Genesis 3, I think it's 315, where it shows that uh, Jesus was already, you know, God was already planning redemption, right? All the way in, back in Genesis 3, you know, where it says right, that, right. you know, about, you know, Satan where, you know, he'll bruise his heel, but will crush his head, right? Or God will crush his head. So all all the way back in Genesis, he was already right. ready to redeem a mankind. Yeah, he's, you know? he's talking about the seed of the woman. And yeah. the seed comes from the man. So there yeah. we're, we're even being told he's going to be born of a virgin. Yeah. It's all right there. <laughs> and when we put death before Adam by accepting older beliefs based on denying the global flood, we just open the door to all sorts of bad theology and, and, and uh, yeah. er- heresy. For that and what's, what's sad to me is, you know, I've been looking at apologists and a lot of the big apologists, the modern day yeah. apologists, they seem to adopt all these things it seems to me i'm not sure why but to me it seems like they want to be cool with the scientists of the day and be like hey we we're smart like you we're intellectual but we still believe in god you know but then when i hear them i think i think it was william lane craig i heard him talking Mm, about genesis and just acting like it was a mythology just acting like it was a a fairy tale you know the way that he was talking about Genesis, and I could see how that could be very detrimental to people's faith and mm-hmm. to to people looking at the Bible and thinking, oh, it's just a just a story, just mm-hmm. a fairy tale. And so I just, when mm-hmm. I saw that, I was pretty disappointed. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sure that <laughs> disappoints you as well. <laughs> but yeah, well, it, it 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 really does. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's also, or fortunately, depending on how you you want to look at this, it's also extremely biblical. Hmm. Um, I, I don't want to get into all the negatives here, but no. Jesus Christ, when the disciples asked Jesus, what would be the signs of the last days yeah. right no. before the end of the world? The first things he warned us of was false Christ, false prophets, and false teachers. Hmm. Yeah. And that's what we see today. So yeah. when we see something like that, uh, the individual you just mentioned, he just needs to be corrected. Uh, in as loving a way as possible, but he needs yeah. to be corrected. Now, will he accept that correction? <laughs> um, I guess that'll tell you if he's just a misled Christian or, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We, we're, we're told, though, there will be terror among the wheat. There will be wolves dressed as sheep, and they, they are out there. I'm not saying that this person is one, but mm-hmm. if he is, uh, you know, corrected on this uh, mm-hmm. and still refuses and still goes out teaching heresy uh, that actually leads to uh you know a different jesus than the one found in the bible that's a dangerous place to be and that's between him and and god but yeah we be careful i, I actually have a false teacher test my my newest message is mm-hmm. false christ shall arise and i mm-hmm. compare the biblical christ with these colored emblems so it stands out to the theistic evolution Christ, progressive creation Christ, and gap theory Christ. And when you compare them side by side, it just leaves people's mouths <laughs> wide open, just like, yeah. wow. Um, because the, the other three are not found in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And that's easy to show. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of well-meaning people. Most of the folks that believe in one of the other three, I call them the non-biblical Christ, because they're not found in the Bible. Mm-hmm. They're not evil people. They're just misled. And th- yeah. there's a lot of bad teachers out there. And yeah. I'm, I can't judge if a person is just a misled teacher or a terror or a wolf or anything else. Yeah, Jesus knows, though, and he'll straighten yeah. it all out at the, at the proper time. But what we need to do is try to give people reasons to, to realize, hey, you're being you're off base here. And, and when you're off base on theology, we're all off base somewhere in theology. Hmm. Yeah, we all yeah. are. Mm-hmm. But. Being wrong about who Jesus is can be serious. Yeah. You know, 
I, I mean, one thing I ask folks is, uh, you know, do you think it's important to Jesus that we worship him as the creator he claims to be? Hmm. Well, think about, let me give you just a few examples. The first five words of the Bible, five words in, in the Bible, God has 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 told us he's the creator. In the beginning, yeah. God created. Amen. In the middle of the Ten Commandments, etched into stone by God's very own finger, we're told, for in six days, the Lord made the heaven, the earth, the seas, and all that in them is, in six mm. days, resting on the seventh. On uh, the day of Jesus' resurrection, he approaches his two disciples who he's told he would he would be crucified. He's told he would rise again on the third day, and he was crucified, and now it's the third day, and they've been told he's risen. They don't even believe it. They're leaving. They're heading toward Emmaus. Hmm. On the day of Jesus' resurrection, he approaches them and begins teaching them with Moses, hmm. probably setting down the foundation, the creation, the original sin, the separation, and why hmm. he needed to die to redeem us. And uh, the last time the Gospels mentioned in the Bible is in Revelation 14, where an angel's flying across the heavens holding the everlasting gospel while exhorting the people of the planet to worship the Creator. Hmm. You think maybe in the last days they'll be denying the Creator? Yeah. Um, you know, it's an important issue. Hmm. In fact, the first time the elders in heaven are mentioned uh, falling down and throwing their crowns before the, the throne of the Creator. Jesus is our creator, and mm -hmm. I think we need to realize it's Satan's good at what he does, and he can get us to deny Jesus and not even realize that we're doing it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, don't get me wrong. I understand that uh, the gospel message is, in fact, it's given, uh, Paul spells it out really well in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, where he, he basically tells us, here's the gospel that you believe that, Jesus died for our sins mm -hmm. according to the scriptures, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So I think we're being told we need to believe in the Jesus of the Bible, having shed his blood, died for us, and, and rising again. So it's, it's a dangerous place to deny Christ anywhere, mm -hmm. but uh, especially at, at the foundational facts that he is the creator, judge, and savior. So what our ministry tries to do, guys, is we, we just try to show people, hey, I know what you're being taught. Let me show mm -hmm. you why the real science Amen. is on yeah. the Bible side, is on the believer's mm -hmm. side. Yeah. Real, sci real science is our best friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what are some things you would give people? Because there's a lot of people, even Christians. I mean, there's our we have youth group that we um, both run our church, and the kids are taught, you know, millions of years. And... Uh, where now a lot of the moms here are starting to homeschool and do like co-ops here. And so now your book's going to be a really great resource. So we're excited for that. But what would you say to even Christians and people who are saying, okay, but I don't feel like there's, what's the credibility or the evidence for creationism? Like what are some things you would show them or give them? Okay, well, I would tell them that we all have the same evidence. It's not a matter of the evidence. Uh, I say we have the same evidence to show the Bible's true that atheists use to say the Bible's not true. Mm. It's not a matter of the evidence. We have the same evidence. It's a matter of who gets to interpret that evidence. Take the crust of the earth, those stratified layers laid down by water, separated by grain size, weight, and density. So you have all shale together, all sandstone together, all limestone together. Uh, just like a miner in a pan, he scoops up some sediments and water, he sloshes it back and forth. The moving water separates the sediments in his pan by grain size, weight, and density. Gold being the densest falls to the bottom. Well, on a global scale, we have these stratified layers making up the crust of the earth. That's great proof of the global flood, which, by the way, wipes out every old earth belief that puts death before Adam. But the sacralists look at the exact same evidence. And again, going back to 2 Peter 3, 3 through 6, it says in the last days, non-believers will claim uniform processes and deny the global flood. Well, based on the belief in um, uh, uniform processes and denial of the global flood, secularists interpret the stratified layers laid down by water as having formed slowly and uniformly over millions of years of time with no global flood being involved. Exact same evidence just a different interpretation. Now, mm -hmm. our interpretation fits a whole lot better. You got to ask the secular side, why are they stratified? 
<laughs> they form slowly. Wouldn't it be just kind of a big brown conglomerate? Why, why all the stratified layers separated by grain size, weight, and density? Hmm. They don't really have a good answer for that, but they own the system, and that's where we are today. Mm. Yeah. It's so sad. And I also, it's kind of going back, but what you're talking about him being like God being the creator and why that's so important is, is it in Romans or where I forget the verse, but where it talks about they will worship the creation rather than the creator. And that's what we see mm. yeah. is Romans people, one. I think, it, yeah, it's yeah. in Romans yeah. 1. Yeah, Romans mm-hmm. 1, 20, 21, right in there. Yeah. yeah. It was funny. We read Romans one to our youth, and they were like, "What? Like that's so clear. Like explains- just about homosexuality <laughs> oh. and everything." They're like, "Just what the Bible says is very clear. What's going on today?" Mm-hmm. But it um, it's like a hand on the glove. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so yeah, I mean, what we see a lot, I think. I mean, you're in a different place in Arizona, but probably even more so if you're closer to Flagstaff and Sedona and all that those places. But a lot of New Age, where it's like they worship the creation and they but yet they wouldn't i love how is it ray comfort he's like you don't look at a building and say oh no one built that that just happened Hmm. you know but so how would you explain that to people who are like oh this creation is so beautiful but they don't want to believe there's a creator that's Hmm. a side note but yes yeah it's pretty hard to it's pretty hard to be an atheist today. I don't really think there's many atheists. Most atheists are agnostics, mm. which is a person who believes there's a higher power but says he, he can't know who that higher power is. When I used to speak mm. on college campuses, I'd always have some some kid come up to me when I was done and, and look and get right in my face and say, I'm an atheist. <laughs> and like it was supposed to upset me when I'm actually thinking, well, that's mm. your problem, not yeah. mine. I didn't yeah. say that. But what mm-hmm. I would say is, you know, I, I don't believe you're an atheist. I think if you're honest with yourself, you're, you'll you'll admit you're an agnostic. And every single time they said, yeah, I'm really <laughs> an agnostic. It's just easier to say, they, it's easier for them to say they're an atheist because people don't question that. If they say they're an agnostic, people go, well, what's that? And they have to explain. So I think most of uh, your supposed atheists are really agnostics. How can you look at, know anything about a cell? and about the molecular motors that run a cell, and about the genetic information and the complexity of the genetic information. We have three billion base pairs of genetic information per cell times somewhere around 80 to 100 trillion cells, and all the genetic information to code for all 8 billion people on Earth could Mm. fit into a container the size of an aspirin. They wow. can talk about complexity and all those molecular motors. Uh, there's just no way. Uh, this is the reason real science can't get life to start from non-life. Mm. That's a scientific impossibility. The law of biogenesis states that. And never has life been known to come from non-life. Life is too complicated to come from nothing. And mm. uh, that's the reason there really can't be a true atheist today unless they're very, very um, ignorant of even basic science. Yeah. Real science is on our side, by the way. Yeah. And my yeah. dad would always say, right. Um, and agnostic means ignoramus, which just means on the Latin. Yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> anyway, so it's kind of yeah. sad, he but doesn't tell people. he doesn't, he doesn't yeah, say no. that to people. No, I think he does. <laughs> <laughs> no. Probably does. Yeah, but but yeah, I learned that gets me in trouble. Yeah. 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 Well, that kind of goes into the next question because, yeah. um, a lot of people think that you just said science is on our side. But a lot of people think that Christians are illogical, you know, for not believing in millions of years or mm-hmm. in evolution or mm-hmm. not being like some of the apologists of the day and saying, oh, it could be both. You know, you can have. But I, I did a message on how it, it was titled, you can't have both. You know, <laughs> you can't have the best of both worlds. No, God is true, right? Like God be true and every man be a liar. So. What do you say to people when they say, no, science isn't on your side, or when they say you're illogical for Mm -hmm. not believing in millions of years? Well, first of all, I realize that they are ignorant of all the facts. Mm -hmm. The other side, the secular side, owns the system. People only get their interpretation. So now I like to give, like in my book, Cost, I I give both interpretations Mm -hmm. because when you compare them side by side, Nobody believes in the secular misinterpretation of the world. So they have to have a total monopoly. 
And, mm-hmm. you know, Jesus said, you're with me or you're against me. Amen. He didn't He didn't say, hey, take the secular atheist foundation and mix it into my word. I think hmm. that's a dangerous place to be. But Jesus will sort that out at the proper time. I just try to tell uh, folks that um, real science is on our side. Most people don't know this today. And I, this is one thing I, I do to shock people with how badly misled we've been. It, I, I was speaking at a, at a public high school up in Oregon a couple of years ago. And the kids came in and sat in the auditorium, and they were just cross-eyed, just glaring at me. And, well, that kind of caught me off guard because I, I'm used to that in colleges. But I was I was kind of surprised that at the high school level they'd been so indoctrinated. Mm-hmm. And God just gave this to me. Before I started, I say, hey, before I start, I want to ask you all a question. Of the 200 or so branches of modern science, how many of those branches do you guys think were started by Christians? <laughs> None, probably eighty-two percent, and all of a sudden yeah. the cross arms. It was like, what? <laughs> uh, how come we've never been told this before? Yeah, and I said, because secularists own the system, and they are giving you only their misinterpretation of the world, and that opened up the door. And then I just destroyed Darwinism for them, which, by the way, <laughs> is one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. I only have one teaching on Darwinism. It's the top ten Darwinian lies in the textbooks, and it just it just destroys Darwinism. I've given it on colleges. One biology teacher saw it and quit her job and became a Christian. Wow. It destroys okay. Darwinism. Mm-hmm. I just don't need, after that one, there's there's not much to talk about there with Darwinism. So I only have the one real message on Darwinism. Love yeah. That. That's awesome. Yeah. And it made me think of too, just like the school system and stuff. I mean, we know that with our world, mm-hmm. like everything is just, it's so crazy. Like even, Big Pharma and all this stuff will probably be canceled for this. But, like, they have their one way of doing things, and then that's just how it goes. And But we know, like, with Christ, we don't have to fear these things, right? We don't have to fear all the craziness. Mm-hmm. That's why, praise the Lord, that we have Christ, the hope of glory, and he lives inside of us. But for those who don't know it, it kind of makes sense why they, like, will go for this because— they don't have Christ in them. They don't Mm. have the wisdom that the Lord gives. But I also think it's really sad. And Morgan was kind of mentioning this, but we see apologists like this one guy, I'm not going to mention who, but he was telling me and he came to our church and he's really well known. A lot of people know him. And he was saying, well, the reason why I like old earth is because then it's a really good way to witness to the people who uh, don't know. And I was like, it just makes me sad that it feels like, like you're talking about the last days, like they want their, like, itch. What does it talk about? Like their itching yeah. ears, and basically exactly. they want to hear what they want to hear. And so, how would you explain this to someone if they're like, "Oh, I just want to be able to like relate with people, and I want to relate with the students or stuff," but and then you come in, go into the high school, and just tell them that it's all lies. Like, how would you explain that to not compromise? Like for Christians to not compromise with this. Well, well, first of all, I, uh, it's it's really, really sad that uh, well-known uh, Christian speakers, and uh, he's really not an apologist for Christianity. He's an apologist for the secular worldview, quite frankly, yeah. um, hmm. is we need to stand on the truth. But we don't just throw things out and say, hey, the, the world is only a few thousand years old and uh, just leave it at that. No, we show people the, hmm. the evidence is on our side. You know, mm-hmm. I lead Grand Canyon tours, and it's one of the five pillars of old earth beliefs. And most people, have you probably been to Grand Canyon? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most people have been there or seen pictures. Well, if you're standing on the rim, it's a mile from the rim down to the river. Well, that's a mile of stratified layers laid down by water. But they won't tell you at the canyon is that mile of, of strata you're, you're standing on is nothing. There used to be two miles of layers above the layer that makes the rim of Grand Canyon today. Hmm. It's been cut and removed by water and removed south all the way to the sea. In fact, Grand Canyon's missing 900 cubic miles of sediments. Uh, This erosional event I'm talking about left behind what's geologically called the Grand Staircase, uh, where water cut a 2,500-foot cliff at Bryce, dropped 40 miles south, cut the 2,500-foot cliffs at Zion, removing all those 5,000 feet of layers south to the sea, Hmm. dropped another 45 miles, cut the 2,000-foot-tall Vermilion Cliffs, dropped another almost 90 miles and cut the 2,000-foot-tall 
uh, Mogollon Rim that goes east and west across northern Arizona. And it removed those layers south to the sea where, where Grand Canyon's missing 900 cubic miles. The staircase is missing 133,000 cubic mm -hmm. miles. And God left two 900-foot buttes, one at both of the two entrance points to the south rim of Grand Canyon, mm -hmm. which are undeniable proof of the global flood. But people drive right by them, and, and they see them, and nobody explains it to them. Yeah. So those are some of the things I show at Grand Canyon. I can show you where the original creation rock is, where the first the flood layers came, where they actually, where the, the judgment layers lay right on top of creation rock where you could go and put your thumb on creation rock and your finger on the first, the, your fingers on the first of the flood layers, hmm. literally where creation and judgment meet. There's so much I can show people in that region. And I've been doing those trips for over 20 years now. And I take, hmm. like I said earlier, a thousand people or so a year to the Canyon and, and through the grand staircase. Oh. But uh, the evidence is on our side, but we don't own the system. So it's very hard to get that information out. Hmm. But uh, what I would do like what with these old earth apologists, is they're they're teaching they're denying the mm. foundation of the gospel message they're denying that jesus is the creator he says he is they're denying he's the judge he says he is but they're saying i want salvation so i, I believe jesus died on a cross and rose again well it's going to be up to jesus whether or not are they believing in the jesus of the bible or have they replaced him with a different jesus who they think mm. died on a cross and that's that's a dangerous place to be. Yep. I would mm -hmm. never judge that myself. We can't only Jesus can judge that, but he gave us so many warnings not to do this. Amen. He told us of false teachers. He told us people would be uh, claiming uniform processes and denying the flood. He he told us many would come to him on that day saying, Lord, Lord, and he's mm -hmm. gonna say, Ha ha, get away from me. I never knew you, you worker of inequity. I, I mm. think when we change God's word, and especially at a level that it actually denies Christ in many areas and replaces him with one that fits the secular foundations, mm. yeah, I just tell people that is a dangerous place to be. Let me show you why you can believe in the biblical version of Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the reason I talk about creation and the global flood. The global flood is the linchpin in the war of worldviews. The global flood explains how the earth's crust formed quickly. Mm -hmm. That's why they have to deny the global flood and say the crust forms slowly, which is where all old earth beliefs come from, including radiometric dating techniques, which mm -hmm. have to match the column to get accepted. So it really comes down to whether or not this crust of the earth formed slowly and uniformly with no flood or quickly during the flood. It's the foundational issue. It's the linchpin in the, uh, in the war of worldviews. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I could go back to the, to we talked about science being on our side. Mm. Yeah. Most folks have never heard the difference between operational science, which is a believer's best friend, and historical science. Mm. In fact, I used to speak on college campuses. I'd cover this, and the skeptics in the audience would, we've never heard of historical science. Mm -hmm. And I would say, I told you I was going to show you things that they're not telling you here. So... <laughs> Hang on to your hat. But <laughs> operational science is what most folks think about when they think of science. Operational science is knowledge derived from the study and testing of observable evidence. That's real science, a believer's best friend. Mm -hmm. But historical science is a different issue. Historical science is not knowledge derived from the study of evidence. Historical science are assumptions made mm -hmm. by taking operational processes we can see today Mm -hmm. assuming they've always been uniform and there was never a global flood and compare it, taking those uniform rates today and say they've always been uniform, they've always been the same, and applying them to past events that were not observed, that's historical mm -hmm. science. So the results based on these assumptions and wild guesses. And whenever there is a, uh, a conflict between what the Bible says and what's being taught as science, it's always historical science not mm. operational science. Operational science is our best friend, real science, mm. but historical science is where the issues are. Let me give you an example mm. of how uh, de debunked uniformity uh, yeah, and uniformitarianism is official word, uh, the mm. belief that processes we can see today have always been the same. If you've ever drained oil out of your car or seen it drained mm. out of a car, 
Now, let's say you'd never seen that. Well, you know, someone pulls a little plug out of the bottom and boys, oil pours in the pan and five minutes later, it's, it's done. Well, let's say you'd never seen that. You believe in uniform processes. You come along, you know, 10 hours later and here's this full pan of oil and you watch and watch and 24 hours later, one drop comes out. Well, mm-hmm. based on uniformity, one drop every 24 hours, you're gonna conclude it took 100,000 years to fill that pan <laughs> with oil. Yeah. But you're absolutely wrong. It happened quickly, and uniformity is a faulty theory. The, there's mm-hmm. crust, the stratified layers separated by grain size, weight, and density by moving water. They form quickly in the flood, not solely and uniformly at rates we can see today. So yeah. they have to deny the flood, and that's why it's still linchpin in the war of worldviews. Mm-hmm. So yeah. historical and operational science, real mm-hmm. science is our site, our friend. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, Ken Ham, I was at the Ark Encounter last October, and yeah, he was explaining that the difference between historical science and and so when and then also when I was thinking about that, since you do your tours uh, in the Grand Canyon and you're seeing all these layers, and you know people always go back to the fossil record and they're saying, well, the fossils prove that the Earth is 4.6 billion years old or whatever. And uh, but then you see things like trees upside down through all the layers. And so mm-hmm. what's your what are your favorite examples or how do you um, debunk that to, to people when you're you know bringing them on tours and showing them the layers and stuff? How do you say that the fossil record doesn't mean that it's billions of years old, that the earth is billions of years old? Well, you know, first of all, I, again, I go back and explain how the uh, age of the uh, the fossil record, the stratified layers, uh, are based on your belief in the uh, man-made geologic column that they form the layers form slowly and uniformly without a global flood, or quickly in the global flood. The global flood wipes out their old Earth beliefs. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the geologic column basically said the layers are so thick. And we see them forming at about one inch per thousand years today. And based on uniformity, it's always been the same. So it took 15 million years to form this thick of a layer and, you know, 80 million years to form this layer. And that's how they came up with their old earth beliefs. Mm. Now, the way they, they, they date things is they, uh, first of all, folks think radiometric dating techniques uh, basically prove the, the, the date of the fossil or the layer. Actually, the sedimentary layers that make up the crust of the earth, there is no radiometric dating technique to date sedimentary rock. Hmm. They date the rock layers by the fossils in it hmm. based on the geologic column or time scale made and in, uh, invented about 220 years ago. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's say they, they date the, uh, the fossils by the rock layer they're in. Let's, let's say let's say they date the rock layer by the fossil in it. They mm. it, they do it both ways actually. And circular so reasoning that. there. <laughs> yes. That they, you know, yeah. I I show a textbook in my in my message on the top ten old earth beliefs by the way that that shows uh, on page three hundred six uh, in a textbook they tell kids they date the rock layer by the fossil in it and then on page <laughs> three hundred seven it says they date the fossil by the rock layer it's in. <laughs> so and it's all based on the geologic column, yeah. but they're fossils. Are, are the key. They're called index fossils. They supposedly went extinct while this layer was forming, so they wouldn't be mm. found in the newer layers above because they had gone extinct way back here, supposedly. Yeah. But their index fossils are being found alive today by the dozens. It's totally destroying the geologic column's uh, credibility, mm. and the radiometric dating techniques have to match the column to get because mm. they get a wide range of dates when they isotope date something, and they date they they pick the date that matches the column. So there is no, there is no uh, viable way to age things old. Most things will show a young earth if you really get into it. And um, mm-hmm. I show people that there's no reason to believe and trust in the radiometric dating techniques. They're based on multiple wild guesses. Mm-hmm. And um, one being that, let's say, potassium decays into argon. Well, they assume no argon was there when the rock first formed. That's an assumption, unobserved. But they're finding now that argon's oftentimes found in rocks. It just formed in, in lava yeah. flows, et cetera. So their assumption that the, the daughter material, the argon in this case that they're measuring, 
was at zero when it started has been blown out of the water. Well, if it had the daughter material in it, argon in this case, it's going to date millions or billions of years older than it really is. So yeah. the radiometric dating techniques are full holes. Yeah, why do they still back, you, like why do they still talk about it when clearly they can radiometric date something like 50 years old and get thousands or millions, you know, how why do they I mean it I mean, I kind of know why they do that, but why do they still use these things that have been proven to not be reliable? Well, you know, it comes right down to their supporting their worldview, their religious yeah. belief. And if they lose millions of years, they lose it all. Yeah. They lose mm. everything. Yeah. Uh, there's really only three uh, viable religions that survive a global flood. This is how important the global flood is. That would be Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Wow. Well, Islam was invented 600 years after the Bible was written. It's got a lot of historical issues. Truly, the global flood, when properly explained, brings the world down to Christianity or Judaism, which is really one question. Is Jesus the promised Messiah? So when you do this correctly and you destroy Darwinism, then you destroy the age of the earth beliefs, hmm. and you bring the world down to one question, is Jesus the promised Messiah? Well, then mm -hmm. you go to the prophecies fulfilled. Amen. And that's what we used to call in the business world a done deal. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing with, with the um, Christian speakers who, who, who sell old earth beliefs, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's really a shame. Yeah. But they and we, when we accept old earth beliefs, we open the door to every false religion out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we could bring it right down to three, right down to two, right down to the prophecies fulfilled. And uh, that's what I try to share with people. Yeah. You know, the facts are on our side, but we don't own the system. And yeah. that's where it is today. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. And I like, I like your heart about it because... You know, it's like you know that the Bible clearly says that these things are going to happen, that false teachers are going to, you know, rise up. And, you know, you, instead of being sad and, you know, it is, you know, disappointing, but instead of being like, oh, man, it's just, it's all going down, you know, going to a bad place. Instead of doing that, you're like, yeah, it is, but I still need to get the message out. I still need to correct lovingly, you know, yeah. correct those who are speaking false things. And you're still, it seems like you're still hopeful. And that's mm -hmm. what I like about you, that you don't give up. You know, you, you mm -hmm. still teach and preach and share the truth. And even though you know that, yeah, we could, we're, it seems like we're <laughs> really close to the end. We're mm -hmm. in the last days, yep. but yes. you're, you're not giving up. So I'm thankful for that. Yeah. You know, uh, I appreciate what you said and, uh, hmm. You know, I, I mean, I've had my failures over the years, like we all have, but yeah. uh, the goal is, it's really, it's not about us. It's not about me. It's about yeah. uh, Jesus Christ and getting people to put their trust in him so they can Amen. spend eternity with him in heaven Amen. Uh, rather, rather than the alternative, which is, doesn't sound like a very good place to go. No. Yeah. And it, it is disappointing when we see people inside the church uh, just given warm and fuzzies when yeah. you, you know we're losing majority of our kids by the age of twenty. We we yeah. gotta we gotta cover these issues. Yeah. You know, I love to do just a warm and fuzzy, but too many important things at this point in time to yeah. to cover. Yeah, and we're not you know, we're not you know, shepherding people if mm -hmm. if that's all we're doing. Yeah. So I appreciate you guys standing on the truth, mm, and um, I just try to do my best. I feel God called me to stand on the truth, and mm -hmm. that, that's what I try to do. I try to do it in as loving way as possible because I am challenging people yeah. inside of Christian circles. Over 90% of our seminaries and colleges teach old earth beliefs to put death before Adam. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I realize I'm swimming against the stream, but I had a pastor once tell me, well, hey, Russ, have you ever, have you ever been, you know, done some fly fishing? <laughs> and I said, well, a little but not much she says but when you fly fish you stand in the stream and you cast upstream and let your fly come down because the, the fish they're they're swimming upstream the live fish are swimming upstream mm. if a fish comes floating by you downstream he's dead the dead <laughs> fish are going downstream but the live fish are, are facing upstream so yeah. i guess that's that's maybe the, one of the better ways to to look at it we are swimming against the current but it's yeah. what jesus asked us all to do right Amen. and he's trying to hang in there the 
it, it can be disappointed today. If I weren't a Christian, what's going on in the nation would just, just break my heart. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I look at it and I say, wow, uh, this is exactly what God said it would yeah. be like. Yeah. Exactly. I think a few years ago, I was kind of down about it. Mm-hmm. And my wife, Joanna, said to me one day, she said, you know, you're going around telling people the Bible's true, correct? <laughs> yeah. And the Bible says it's going to be like this in the last days, correct? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you get upset about it. Yeah. <laughs> ever since, you know, it's like, oh, you ever know, Morgan, you ever notice how the Holy Spirit sounds a lot like your wife sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And knowing yeah. his wife, I would, yes. Yeah. It's a small voice. Yeah, yeah she yeah, yeah, the Lord speaks anyway. here a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but it is yeah. really cool just to see and that we also forget the part of just faith. Like without faith it's impossible to believe him. But it's not like a blind him. faith. Yeah. yeah, it's impossible to please him. And so mm. the cool thing is that there is evidence and that's yeah. the and we're like so thankful for that that the Lord gives us that. It's not like he's just like, Oh, you know, put your faith in me and there's nothing that I'm going to mm-hmm. give you just, but it's like, even if he's done so many good things, like the prophecies alone that have been fulfilled, like no other book or nothing can do that, but the Bible. And I love just like scientists trying to disprove the Bible and then getting saved because they're like, mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, this is. It happens if, time after time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. If they're honest with themselves and humble themselves, they'll realize, wow, I've been trying to refute the Bible, but it, Everything keeps supporting what the Bible tells us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's God's word is awesome, mm-hmm. and uh, I think that a lot of folks, like the speakers who are compromising it with the foundation of secular atheistic humanism, they're they're really underselling it. They mm-hmm. they need to they need to humble themselves and learn some information, like we've discussed today, and start mm-hmm. standing on the truth of God's word. Because Jesus said, you're with me or you're against Amen. me. He didn't say compromise me to make people happy. He didn't. Uh, I would love to, and I'm sure you guys are on the same uh, page. I would love just to make everybody happy. But yeah. I, mm-hmm. we need to, to do that by, by sharing the truth. Even Amen. if it goes against, even if you're you're swimming upstream against yeah. the, the, the flow, uh, the real science is on the side of the Bible. You know, I'm often asked about the Big Bang. God could have used the Big Bang. I always say, well, which one? We're on our fourth Big Bang. There was the steady state Big Bang, the hesitation model Big Bang, the oscillating Big Bang, (laughs) Big Bang, and then the inflation or expanding Big Bang. They've all been scientifically debunked. The Hubble and the James Webb both pretty much got rid of the current Big Bang, but they they won't replace it because they don't have anything to replace it with. (laughs) And in the beginning, God created, and they don't want to go there. Um, science shows evolution, m- only micro changes within the same kind of, of plant or animal take place. Dogs produce mm-hmm. various dogs. People yeah. can produce various looking people, but people only produce people. Yeah. Canines only produce canines. Kinds only bring forth after their kind. Mm-hmm. Cause loss of information. Darwinian macro change needs massive amounts of new and beneficial genetic information being added. Real science knows of no way for that to happen. And reason that's important especially for kids still in school to understand is 10 times in genesis we're told plants or animals will bring forth after their kind and that's yeah that's the only thing science has ever observed yeah is bringing forth after their kind through the loss mm-hmm. of information they lose too much they die off we call that natural selection but it's really god's qa program because if they went unchecked they would corrupt the gene pools and everything would go extinct in about 1500 years they mm-hmm. lose too much information God designed them to die off so they don't corrupt the gene pool. And that's what mm. science finds. Kinds only bring forth after their kind. Yeah. So, you know, we could just go on and on and on. Uh, but real science is on our side. And it's not because we're yeah. smart. It's, it's because God's word is true. Amen. Yeah. And like I say, word for word and cover to cover. Yes. Amen. And like you're saying, you know, of course we want to make everyone happy, but what's going to make them happiest is is eternal yes. happiness, right? Eternal bliss, eternal joy with Jesus. And the only way to get there is through his word, through him. And that's the truth. There's only one truth. But nowadays we have a lot of people saying, what's your truth? Or, you know, they say mm-hmm. it's whatever feels true. That's mm-hmm. what's true. It's like, that's why we need to have, we need to be on the same page, even with these things, you know? 
And I think there's some Christians who might be like, I thought you could have a lot of different views. But what I've been realizing this year, like I said earlier, is it really comes against the authority of God's word yeah. when you add different things in that's not there, you know? Mm-hmm. And then even the, the people try to use that a day is like a thousand years, you know, for, oh for the, you know, for each day of creation. And I was like, well, that doesn't solve their problem anyway. That's only 7,000 years. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, and yeah. then also, <laughs> and then yeah. also if Adam lived to be, I think 930 years, he would have died before the next day, you know, because it was been under a thousand years. So people try That's to right. throw these verses out, but they don't really mm-hmm. think about them and evaluate them like that, you know? So, Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We just need we need to have good teaching. That's what I'm sure mm-hmm. you guys do. It's what I try to do, and we just need to get good teaching out there to folks. And yeah. that those are all the things I try to talk about and, sh- and share with people. You know, the biggest attacks over the last hundred years have been millions of years and Darwinism. A lot yeah. of people tell me, "Oh, Darwinism is a big attack." Well, it is, but it's a fruit coming off the old Earth beliefs. People aren't catching the fact that it's the old Earth beliefs yeah. based on denial of the flood. That is opened up the door. I mean, Jesus said we tell good from bad by the fruit. The fruit of these old earth beliefs based on uniformity and denial mm-hmm. of the flood invented 220 years ago. The first major fruit is Darwinism. These two have combined millions of years leading to Darwinism to provide the foundation for modern humanism, atheism, agnosticism, the mm-hmm. New Age movement, theistic evolution, progressive creation, gap theories, and all other sorts of non-biblical yeah. beliefs. And if I just stepped on someone's toes out there, I did it to help you out. Yeah. I did it to, to wake you up and I think gap theory. And, and, I think that's a one that I hear a lot. Yeah. Um, so is there anything to help people who are really holding to gap theory? Like, what would you tell them? Like, is there anything quick that you could tell them or would it take a while to explain we'll to things or? Yeah. Well, no, I would, um, it, it may take a while. I would probably first point out that yeah. it's death before Adam. Um, and after yeah. that, I would say, you know, hey, how about reading my book, Cost? It would really help you out. And if not, mm. I've got a thumb drive I call Give a Reason based on First Peter 3.15, Give a Reason for the Hope that's in Your Heart. Mm. has my five top teachings in the order I would present anybody, a Christian, an atheist, anybody. It shocks them. The first ones is the top 10 Darwinian lies. Mm. And a lot of people say, oh, mm. come on, they're not lying to, to us. Well, you see that first teaching? That blows that thought right out the window, and it opens up your mind to then get into the age of the earth issues. And I even now put the cost on that, and I don't copyright that. I, I tell people, you can make all the copies. Make a million copies. <laughs> give them to everybody you want yeah. And because we're trying to make an impact with people. Yeah. And uh, so I don't copyright my DVDs or thumb drives, mm. and uh, I want people to get that information out there. That's, awesome. that's what I would tell them. I, I would start with, yeah. though, with the yeah. before Adam. That seems to make an impact with most people. Yeah, yeah, death before yeah. him, yeah. Yeah, and my dad was saying this Sunday, but just reminding us that, like, woe to you when all men speak well of you like they did the false mm. prophets. And we know that people are not going to agree and talk well, but we know that yeah. God's word is true, and we're going to keep preaching his word until he comes back. I always say, rupture or rapture, so whatever <laughs> happens first. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I'm very grateful for you, and we're yeah. going to have to c- have you come to our church and speak in person and answer all these questions. Our, yes. our I'd church love family to do it. would love to meet excited. you too in person and, yeah. yes. and share with, with everybody down there. So just let's just set up a time that works uh, yes. probably sometime next year. Yes. Yeah, for next awesome. Year. Sounds great. And so you said they can get your book. Can they get that on creationministries.org? your book or where yeah. would they? Yeah. So they can get my book. They can get that thumb drive or give a reason mm-hmm. thumb drive. And we have some other resources on there too. They can, uh, we've got a couple of our staircase and rim tours on there for next year. So they can find a lot of information, but the book is, is, it's a very good book. In fact, Northwest Christian school out of Phoenix has been rated the number one private school in Arizona for nine years in a row. And they actually have developed a, a course in their school based on my book cost and my wow. videos that are input uh, throughout the course. And um, they uh, actually are putting it online so kids and people around the globe can take it. And they're hoping that within a year it will qualify for a uh, public high school wow. uh, credit. Oh, cool. Yeah, kids take it. So they're yeah. they're working on that right now. So mm-hmm. hopefully, uh, I'll use it to get some information out there 
yeah. reach a few people. So Amen. all we can do, right? That's I awesome. can tell that's your your heart because you know you you just want to get it out. You don't need like of course we need money to survive, but <laughs> you're not about the money. Yeah, that's why I'm. Fame. That's yeah. another thing I'm thankful about yeah. just talking with you that you. you just want to get the word out because you care about people's souls, you know, yeah. and you want them to know the truth. So uh, thank you for yeah, God takes doing care that. of us. You know, God, yeah. God takes care of us. I tried to not get in his way. Yeah. yeah. Praise Amen. God. Well, thank you yeah. so much Russ, for joining us. Do you have any other things you would like to share before we end or? Oh, I think that's probably a lot. And just, yeah. I would just <laughs> end with reiterating real science is on the believer's side mm -hmm. and God's word is true word for word and cover to cover always taken in the proper context mm -hmm. we can trust God's word we can read it believe it and remember it's his word who became flesh and dwelt among us our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ amen, amen. that's awesome thank you nice to meet both of you guys yeah yes, you it was too. great talking with you Thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. And also you can check out Russ Miller's uh, website down below. It is creationministries.org. And you can follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.